start with your name, where you're from, and what you do. Sean Williams, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm the Managing Director for SMS Advisors. All right, well, welcome, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Is there a primary difference between interviewing with a recruiter versus the hiring manager? And how should applicants prepare differently for each one? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a big difference. The recruiter is really going to want to understand if you're a fit for the organization, how do you fit in with the culture, and in a general assessment of what your skill set is. The hiring manager is most likely going to know more technical, uh, more technical understanding of how you fit into the organization. Do you come with the skill set and what your learning curve is? when you come on board to the company. Okay. After experience, what is the single most important trait that hiring managers from business units look for in new graduates from supply chain programs? Oh, that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, I, I think it's, we, we all look at ourselves as supply chain professionals, but if we can just take a second and realize that we're supply chain professionals second, and we're businessmen and women first, and I think what most companies are looking for is someone that can talk the language they can understand the environment and then they can incorporate what that is into supply chain management and be able to deliver the answers that are needed and solutions that are needed in today's uh, corporate America. Okay. What is the best way to answer when a potential employer asks, what starting salary do you expect? <laughs> uh, as much money as possible. Uh, no, I, I think the thing is um, really what value do you believe I bring to the table? And if you look at the skill sets that I have, the experience on my resume or the education that I've, I've come out with, how do you guys usually value that in the marketplace? And really, you never want to ask, answer that question first. Okay. How should young professionals handle requests for references when they've only had one employer and they're trying to be discreet about their job search? That happens often. Um, and I, I've seen that recruiting for Intel, for Bristol Myers, uh, for Meet West Vaco. I think the best way to, to handle that situation is just transparency and honesty. Um, this is something I'm really excited about. It's a career change for me. The reason why I want to move is, is X. Uh, but however, I, 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 if you don't mind, I'm trying to be discreet about this particular job search because I don't want to rock the boat at my current employer. And what is the most common mistake the candidates make? Mm. I think a, a lack of research about the position, but more importantly, a lack of research about the company. Right? So you, it's, it's hard to understand what value you bring to the table if you don't truly understand what that company stands for, uh, what is the company producing, what are the products that it sells, and how does supply chain management procurement or logistics fit into the strategic values of the company. All right. Handshake, attire, eye contact. Rank them in order of importance in making a good first impression. Handshake, attire, and eye contact. Hmm. Uh, it's definitely eye contact. So the, the, the handshake is forgivable to a certain extent. The attire is situational. It depends on what's going on in that person's life at that particular time, that particular moment. I think the eye contact really says more about the person. So you can rebound from the first two. Bad mistakes to make, but you can rebound from the first two. The eye contact really says what you stand for, your character, and how sincere you are in a lot of cases. Did, did I give you good eye contact? Definitely. <laughs> All right, what resume tips and tricks should all young professionals know? Mm. Uh, clean and precise. All young professionals should have a very clean and precise resume. One of the key things that I often see missing on resumes when I do recruiting is your objective. What exactly do I want? I make the same statement for interviews. I've sat in on probably 250 interviews in the last 11 years. and. What I see a lot is a great interview. Uh, they, they brought value to the table. And at the end of the session, they get up and walk out. They don't say, what are the next steps? Or in other words, I want to close the deal. What do we do next? So making sure that the objective is clear on the resume and inside of the interview, you close the deal at the end of the, at the, end of the conversation to make sure you get the business. That's great information. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Thank you.